And I also wanted to underscore one more point. And that is that when you look at our Prophet's message and da'wah, when you look at his preaching and teaching, you notice that no doubt he had a vision and a plan, he had an agenda, and he concentrated on certain core niche groups. For example, when he was looking for a place to emigrate, when Mecca became hostile for him, and he's looking for a place to leave, to go somewhere else. In his vision and plan, he demarcated the most important areas that could potentially be places of hijrah. Number one on the list was Ta'if. We know it didn't work out. Number two, there was the tribe of Kinda. Number three, the tribe of Hawazin. He had a whole list. And each one of these tribes was one of the most largest, the most prestigious tribes of the Arabian Peninsula. He had his agenda. So he targeted those that he felt would be the most conducive. But he did not shortchange anybody else. He was just as sincere, just as passionate as he was with these large tribes, as he was with the smaller ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed that he doesn't go to Kinda, he doesn't go to Hawazin, he doesn't go to Yemen, he doesn't go to uh, the tribe of Thaqif in, 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 in Ta'if. Allah willed that he would go to a small obscure tribe of the people of Yathrib, the Khazraj and the Aus. Allah knew it, he didn't know it. So what do we learn? In the 10th year of the da'wah, our Prophet ﷺ was walking between Kinda and Hawazin. These are large tribes. These are the elite tribes. These are the majestic tribes. He has a plan. He has a vision. He's tying his camel. He passes by a small group of people. Five in number. Five people. That's it. And he asks them, who are you? They said, we are Khazraj. His mind is wandering. Which Khazraj? Ayyul Khazraj. Which Khazraj? Because it's not one of the big names. It's not one of the fancy tribes. It's not one of the elite tribes. Which Khazraj are you? Are you the Khazraj from Yathrib? They said, yes, we are the Khazraj from Yathrib. So he said, do you mind if I sit and talk with you? This is politeness. He's giving them da'wah. Is this a good time for you? May I sit down and have a conversation? They said, tafaddal, sit down. So he sat down with them. And he gave them just as much passion just as much sincerity, just as much of his hikmah as he did to the greatest tribes. It doesn't matter if they're five, it doesn't matter if they're from a small group, our job is to throw the seeds. Allah knows which soil it will plant in. So he went and he gave them that passionate plea. And he said, okay, me to move on. Jazakallah khair, move on. And they said, we'll think about it. And he had no idea that the seed he threw at them that would be the seed that would give fruition to the state of Medina. He had no idea. He tells us in Sahih Bukhari, it's in Sahih Bukhari, that he said, I saw the land of my hijrah. It was a beautiful land of nakhla, of date palms. And my mind went to Yemen. He's thinking of Yemen, the fertile land. My mind went to Yemen. فَإِذَا هِيَ يثرب. It turned out to be Yathrib. He didn't think, he didn't know. But what was the point and what's the point I want, you to, I want to derive for all of us here today? Simple brothers and sisters, it is the principle of Ihsan. The principle of Ihsan. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do it with perfection. Because you don't know, I don't know, what positive thing in which environment and circumstance will give a fruition that will change the entire course of human history. We don't know this. That small five minute meeting that he did with that small tribe from which Khazraj? The Khazraj of Yathrib. He had no idea that that five minute conversation would literally be the turning point in the history of Islam. The next year, six people converted. The next year, 12 people converted. The next year, 73 people converted. And the next year they said, Ya Rasulullah, you cannot remain living in this land where they're trying to kill you. You need to come to Yathrib. And so he performed the hijrah. Five minute conversation done with Ihsan. Look at where that left him. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Brothers and sisters in Islam, we don't know which five minute conversation will be the fruition for us. And it might not be the changing time in human history, might not take the entire Islamic civilization on the left or right hand turn, but it might be the most significant for another person. It might be the changing point in that person's life. Let me tell you one story and then inshallah we will call it an evening. I remember when I was still a teenager many years ago, <laughs> more than 20 years ago, and it was my task to drive a particular sheikh around the country. 
as one of the Mashaikh Mark, we didn't have the, the funds for, for, for uh, air travel. This was still the case in the early 90s, right? So it was my job to drive him between Houston and Dallas, right? We're in Texas. Okay, I'm from Texas, from Houston. And on the way there, it was time for Dhuhr and Asr. The Shaykh said, we need to stop and pray. We stopped at a, we stopped at a, uh, a truck stop. And we began to pray and all of the trucks were gathered at one place. I parked the car, we began to pray. And I saw one of the truckers, they all gathered around. I saw one of them, like he's looking at us while I'm praying. I can't help but notice because I'm worried about what we're doing here, right? He's looking at us, he's gesturing, he's, he's doing this and that. And I could not concentrate at all. I mean, you understand without being too explicit, these are people who drive trucks, not trying to be a little bit stereotypical, but you understand it's not the safest place that two bearded guys would feel, right? And he begins gesturing and whatnot until finally when we say the salam, he begins walking towards us. And wallahi, I was just almost, I couldn't breathe because we're all alone. There's a whole bunch of people there. I didn't know what to do. And I could see he was almost trembling. There were tears in his eyes. And he said, you know guys, I just wanted to tell you one thing. If everybody was as passionate about God as you guys were, and if everybody just stopped everything they were doing just for a few minutes to worship Him and praise Him, the world would be a much better place. And He turned around and He walked away. And I was just left stupefied, honestly. Subhanallah. Just the act of salah moved him so much, he was almost in tears. Maybe that was my five minutes with him. Or to be more precise, the shaykh's five minutes, because I was in a very different state of mind. Maybe that was the seed that was planted. Brothers and sisters in Islam, one of the du'as of the Prophet and with this we conclude, that he would say, Allahumma ja'alna mafatiha al-khayri maghaliq al-shar. Oh Allah, make us the keys that open up the doors of goodness. And make us the keys that lock the doors of evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make each and every one of us the keys that open up doors of goodness. And may He make each and every one of us the keys that close the doors of evil. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.